Welcome to another episode of Treasure Corals. Nowadays, most aquarists use LED lighting to light up their aquariums. And while it looks great on the inside, you don't really want any of that blue or uh, light blue light outside of your aquarium. That's what you call stray light. In today's video, I will show you what that stray light looks like uh, on modern fixtures, such as this AI blade behind me or on Ecotec Radian. We're going to talk about this tray light, how far out it goes, talk about the different angles and also ways of containing it. I also want to cover different options of mounting the lights, especially when it comes to these new AI blades. So let's dive right in. to start with my SPS reef aquarium. It has three aqua illumination blade grows. So I don't have any glows on this tank right now as I'm still experimenting with just even the basic lighting before I'm going to supplement with more purple. But let's talk a little bit about how I'm mounting him, why I decided to go with this particular route and also everything about the glare. So you can see I actually went with the lowest profile uh, lighting on, on a four foot tank, which this is, it's a four foot water box. Um, there's zero sagging, so uh, the light is nice and flush. And I turn off the water uh, in this aquarium, but you can see uh, right here, this is the water line. So there's about two inches over here or about five centimeters for our European friends. and. The water is about maybe two centimeters higher. Um, so it's about half. And you can see that I can provide nice low profile and enough separation of about three centimeters or just over an inch uh, between the water surface and the fixture. And since there is not a lot of um, water agitation, I'm specifically running the pumps underneath the water. Um, I don't think there's too much salt creep and I'm just keeping an eye on it and hopefully uh, it's, it's going to be fine. But I want to talk a little bit about the actual uh, glare. When I was designing this aquarium I was very particular about the sound as well as any stray light. So that's one of the reasons when I was running the radiance up at the top I have these visors which you can get at treasurecorals.com and uh, I measured, I was actually running the light at a slight angle so that when I'm sitting on a couch, which is I'm going to go and sit right here or pretend that I am, I was uh, making sure that the light doesn't hit my eye. Now, right now the radians are not running, so I actually have lifted them up by a good extra foot so you can see um, the light underneath but and I'm gonna be dismantling them eventually but right now um, it was not a problem so you can see that if I pretend to be kind of sitting at an angle um, you don't actually see any of the light so there's no stray light um, so if you don't have a canopy and a lot of more modern tanks don't have any canopies um, I just find it abysmal to have any uh, stray lighting into my face. I want to just admire the tank itself. So moving on to the blades or back to the blades. Uh, you can see that here there's still a little bit of light coming through. And if I pretend to sit on my couch, which is about this uh, height, there is that wide strip that I don't yet know what I'm going to do. I um, plan to um, do two different approaches. So first of all, it doesn't bug me that much, especially when the water surface level is a little bit higher. It's, it's not as bad. And while the camera picks it up a lot brighter, in reality, I'll actually play a little bit with uh, the exposure. This is kind of what I see. So uh, that lighting is not, is not that bad and I think I'm okay with it for a uh, short time. But I am planning to try a few things. One of them is even 
running a little strip. So same way as the strips that or the back panel of aquariums where they use a piece of uh, film, black film. I actually have a piece of it that I can run it right on the strip and I'll see what that will look like. Maybe I'll like it, maybe I'm not, but it's not permanent. So I don't think it's going to be a big deal to try. Um, I also noticed some of the fluval aquariums now come with a nice little film, which is semi-transparent. It's kind of a mesh and it looks really cool. So maybe that's another option to just kind of cut down on that little glare. Uh, the other thing that I could do is design some sort of a set of visors for the blades. And this is something I'm looking at, but um, I'm not sure yet. As we will see in my other aquarium, I'm running the uh, blades a lot higher. And even then, it's not uh, a big issue uh, for me where it's, uh, it's not like a radian. With the radian, I think it's just, it's a lot wider spread. And that's why it becomes a bigger issue. But with the blades, it's not as um, uh, distracting. Having said that, I want zero distraction, and that's where um, um, I'm still I'm still thinking about it. Let me know what you think about the <clears throat> mounting, what, about the idea of running that little black strip, and uh, maybe I'll I'll try it over the week and uh, maybe shoot a quick uh, video or a short to um, kind of document that. Let's quickly geek out on the fish before we move on to the uh, other tanks. Uh, you may notice I have introduced this uh, little copper band into aquarium. So he is doing all right. Uh, he's not being bullied by any of these mighty tanks, mighty other fish. But um, I have been feeding a lot. Uh, he's still very, very shy. So uh, when I throw, let's say, three or four cubes of frozen mices, um, I think all the other fish really go for it and he's like uh, Mr. Magoo. So uh, hopefully he's going to be fine. And um, another fish uh, that I'm really happy about is the Royal Grandma. So I've introduced it into this tank um, and uh, for some, thank you Ron. So um, I got this fish from Big Al's on Steels. And um, that fish was, um, by the way, I got the copper band from Demo at Reef Paradise, uh, awesome fish. So this is the one that I got at um, uh, Christmas uh, Boxing Day uh, weekend. And it took about two months of my own quarantine just to make sure that he is, uh, you know, eating robustly, but also put on a little bit of weight and also uh, is less timid. He could easily benefit from probably another two, three months, um, but here we are. But the Royal Grandma, um, I thought it was a goner. Like I've uh, added it to the tank. I have not seen it except for yesterday when I threw those three cubes of uh, frozen mices were kind of peeked out from that little uh, crevice in the back. So that was pretty awesome. And um, I guess using this opportunity, this is what my um, SPS tank looks like right now. I think things are starting to really pick up. Uh, it has been running solely on those blades for the past two weeks, uh, maybe three. And uh, I've not turned on the radions even once. Um, and it's been great. I, uh, I really like it. I really like the silence. And um, I'm definitely a convert when it comes to um, uh, them so far. Okay, let's... Uh, take a look at the other aquarium. On my lagoon system, I'm running two aquailumination blade grows as well. So there's only two of them because this is an LPS system. And um, for a little bit, I've been running them using those mounts on both sides. And uh, if you go back in the videos, you'll see that there was a little bit of a sag in the blades. Um, uh, aquailumination does not recommend running anything over four feet using this method. I was, there's no uh, structural issue, but uh, there's definitely a little bit of an aesthetic. So what I have decided to do, um, so for a while I was running them and I was running them a little bit elevated. So you can actually see that uh, they were about, um, say an inch or two inches above the 
uh, glass. So uh, between them and the water surface, there was about maybe three inches or, or so. And uh, it was running very well. Uh, there's not that much um, glare. So even if I go back uh, here, it's just uh, maybe five, six feet, and I go a little bit lower, that is really what you're dealing with here. So, and really what my eyes see is more like this. So there's not that much uh, light. And it doesn't really detract that much from uh, enjoying the tank. And it's only if you're sitting down. So if I'm standing, this is what I see. So again, uh, most of those modern aquariums, um, they come at a very high stands. So maybe 36 inches or 40 inches. And personally, I like my stands to be as low as possible. I like to sit and enjoy the tank, but uh, I can also see that in a lot of places you want something that's um, viewable as people walk by. So if you know, your tank is viewable from that perspective, then you clearly will need something a little bit, uh, um, a little bit taller. Uh, I have been running it for a while, but now I've decided to MacGyver um, a new system. So um, the tank is 26 inches front to back and um, I'm actually using the two mounts uh, that were left over from the hydras. So I was running four hydras on this aquarium. I've removed two mounts. I've kept two of them. Now those mounts um, come in strange sizes, uh, I guess for this tank. So it's like 15 inches for the bar or the next one I think is 24. So I got the 24 inch um, bars, but they would be sticking out up to here. So I actually used uh, a metal saw and I've cut off uh, parts of it. So you can actually see in the back, this is kind of what you were looking at. Um, I actually have cut this to be, I think about 18 inches. I think that's what I've picked. And I think the end result is pretty awesome. It uh, hovers above the tank. This is something I've never done before. Uh, yeah, maybe if I move uh, things around or work on the tank, it will get in the way, but uh, so far it hasn't bothered me that much. Uh, one thing that does bother me, and I think I'm gonna do something about it fairly soon, is um, this bar in the back, but it's a problem for um, existing systems, even for hydras. So it's a little bit dark, but let me see if I can crank it up a little bit. So you can see in the back there, this bar goes way, way, way down. So the problem with that is that it makes it very hard to clean the back of the glass. And uh, I don't like it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to probably cut off a good chunk of that bar as well. So I can actually use my magnet in the back and just kind of move around. But so far, I really like the result. So this is pretty awesome. Keep in mind that over here, I also turn off the water. So the water level is a little bit lower, but if I'm standing, this is kind of what I'm looking at. And it's pretty good. Again, maybe um, I'll do something to get that last morsel of glare out, but hopefully this will give you an idea of uh, what the tank looks like um, with the blades um, uh, when it comes to that. Now, in terms of fish, there's not many changes in this aquarium. I've just introduced a beautiful pair of uh, goby and a uh, shrimp. Now, I've introduced them and they uh, are both gone. I have no idea where they are. I keep looking. Now it's the second or third day that they've been in this tank and I still haven't found them but uh, hopefully one day they will uh, emerge uh, as a little pair digging and doing their thing. So hopefully that will be sooner than later. Thought I would also show you what the tank looks like when it's fully running. So you can see the water level is a little bit higher. And um, as a matter of fact, a few people have asked about the light spillage on the uh, ends of the blades. So I just wanna show you, this is a six, Sorry, this is a five footer. So this is uh, 60 inches. And the uh, blades that I'm running here, I think this is uh, 57 inches. So it's just slightly shorter than the tank. 
but for people that um, are concerned that there's going to be a light spillage kind of coming from the side, I don't see this being a big issue because if you can see the profile and everything else on this um, blade, and I'm going to use my arm, this is very unscientific, but uh, here we are. So you can see that there's not a lot of spillage of light and that light here, I actually have a window on this side, so that's where it is, but over here there's no window. And this is what a, my, um, you can see through the arm and actually you can see on that reflection on the back, that's really what you're dealing with here. So hopefully that will answer your question in terms of uh, the spillage. I would probably almost always recommend uh, going uh, with the length as close to the length of the tank. I didn't realize how far out they extend, but I don't. As, uh, I, I think it's awesome because there's just so much uh, coverage. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think I would uh, go shorter personally. This is my coral farm, and I've been running Gen 5 Blues over it for uh, over a year, uh, and it's been great. But I decided to supplement this with uh, these two uh, uh, blade glow lights. So the glows are over the, uh, uh, this uh, coral form. And I am betting that soon you're going to start seeing a lot more people in uh, all the different farms. Maybe even worldwide corals or um, any of the awesome um, video channels uh, that we follow. Uh, they're going to start supplementing their uh, farm facility, especially when it comes to um, Acropora, um, where you want to squeeze as much light in as possible and uh, coverage. But I think they're all going to start supplementing with uh, the blades. The blades are so unobtrusive. They're so easy to mount. Um, just overall, it's been super, super uh, awesome experiment. So you can see that I'm actually running uh, them super high. So this is a tall tank. And then on top of that, uh, this particular light is, um, I think, easily two feet, maybe almost um, two and a half feet uh, from the water surface. I like it. Um, I've always run it this way. Um, it just doesn't get in my face i can work on the tank and uh, i think many farms kind of do it anyway so i've uh, mounted the blades um, just a little bit lower um, and uh, i'm experimenting with them uh, right now it's too early to talk about the results but stay tuned i think i'm going to shoot a few videos but also speak about the glare so you can see i'm also using the visors this is a different version of a visor here also available on treasurecorals.com but that's a full visor. So it's a full wraparound as opposed to just uh, the front half. You can see I've got a few more of them here. This is a little bit more uh, basic setup. So this is the uh, Gen 6. This is the um, my XR15. And here, by the way, you can see the wraparound visor. So basically on all sides and right here, the one that's just on the front. So uh, it's something I, I don't run any radians without those uh, things. So when I'm sitting down, nothing hits my uh, eye when it comes to that. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, so that is my farm. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to do a whole video uh, about it. Um, I think we're overdue. I've made a lot of cool changes to it, but uh, you'll just have to wait till um, the next couple of weeks. I hope you found this video educational. Uh, there's many options to contain the glare and I'm still tweaking uh, it on my different aquariums, but I'm pretty happy with the results. I'm curious what your experience is like. Maybe uh, if you write uh, your particular setup in the comments below, I'll be able to learn from that and I'll make sure to comment. Uh, having said that, uh, please like and subscribe this video and I'll see you next week.